All right, so we're doing another night hacking interview. This time I'm with Isolu Greenberg. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. And you were chatting here at the DevNexus conference a little bit about benchmarking, right? Yes, indeed. So um, tell me a little bit about what sort of systems you're benchmarking or what sort of advice you have for developers. Well, most recently I was working on benchmarking our search engine pipeline. So uh, I created the performance analysis pipeline and uh, was measuring the latencies that we had. And uh, in my previous jobs as well, I've done some uh, benchmarking. And it's a, it's a very fascinating, interesting field um, because it requires knowledge of many, many different aspects of how computers work, of how systems work, and um, as well as you know, math, statistics. And um, the one thing that I found is, is that um, there are a lot of people who are very, very good at it, yeah. but translating that knowledge to um, the general community, to the rest of the community is very difficult in that main, there are so many things to consider that um, not everyone would be aware of them. And um, I, I think it's very important to make sure that all of us understand all the different pitfalls that we might encounter because all these mistakes that I've made, that everyone else has made uh, from conversations are pretty much very similar. It's exact same mistakes that uh, we make. Okay, so, so <laughs> give, me, give me an example of what a common mistake would be that somebody makes with benchmarking. Sure, well one of them would be um, with uh, statistics, um, not taking enough samples or taking um, Data, data points that are not really representative of samples. Uh, another one that I commonly find is that outliers are often dismissed if they make up a small percentage of the data and uh, usually tend to be very high latency measurements, then they're just thrown out of the measurements, although they can reveal very big issues, whether with the, ben the benchmark or the systems itself. So, Okay, so mm -hmm. you, you're... In your experience, outliers are something you actually have to pay attention to. You can't simply ignore them as statistical errors. Yes, exactly. Yeah, they've helped me discover numerous bugs in our software uh, just by looking into them and uh, addressing them and trying to figure out why they happened. Cool. So you said you were benchmarking a search engine. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything specific that you learned while you were doing the benchmarking that you didn't know when you started? Well, c one of them was, you know, just digging into every single aspect of architecture. Um, at first, it seemed like, you know, just measuring and end to end would be sufficient. But as I was looking into the results and trying to confirm that my results actually make sense, I uh, ended up learning about every single aspect of it, and it ended up d uh, helping me discover a lot of issues with what um, I thought the results should be like, and with. Um, how the rest of the arc, um, rest of the system works because we discover bugs together, you know, across <laughs> the search engine, and that was really fun, and that was very um, that revealed a lot of interesting issues that we didn't realize before. Cool. Um, so you also have interest in art, mm -hmm. music. Yep. <laughs> Does that contribute to your understanding of systems, which you're doing programming, or is it um, just uh, for fun? It's, um, well, so I usually, I do it for fun, but I find that a lot of skills that I acquire through those um, areas, like through art and music, actually help me as a software engineer. So one of them is, um, for instance, I, for two and a half years I've been painting, I've been doing oil paints. Yeah. And um, it's very interesting. To me, it's very much like learning a new programming language uh, in that at first, you know, it just feels a little awkward. It, um, the medium itself feels un unfamiliar. So um, learning how to operate it, how to make it do what you want it to do, how to help it help, it help you uh, represent uh, what you would like is um, tricky. But then as you get the mastery, you're able to, you know, okay. use all and, and some of that knowledge, like actually the skills Mm -hmm. transfer in terms of how you're learning new things and your right. problem solving. Exactly. Okay, so exactly. I want to, mm -hmm. are we not, oh, sorry, Tori. So I actually want to take a look sure. at some of the stuff you've been working on. So this is one of your recent paintings? Uh, yes. Well, w yes, one of the most recent ones. It's a triptych of a, an imaginary landscape that I did. Um, it took me several months to work on, uh, wow. to f complete it. but. Um, 
That's it was really, really beautiful. Fun. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It was frustrating at times, you know, when it wasn't doing, it wasn't coming out the way I wanted to. But in the end, it <laughs> so what's the what's the medium and like the inspiration for the painting? Um, so the medium is oil paint on canvas, yeah. and the canvas was actually um, uh, I used the black gesso f at first um, to give it like this like you know darker look of the landscape, and. Um, I don't remember your second question <laughs> about oh, it. So, um, the inspiration. The inspiration yes. for it, yeah. Um, so I've always found the crepuscular rays that you see, like this rays of light when you can actually trace the, uh, the whole ray, um, very fascinating, very beautiful. So I wanted to capture that. And I find a lot of you know, mountainy, rocky uh, landscapes uh, very uh, pleasant to look at. So I wanted to capture some of that and the water. So this is something that I came up with in the end. and. Uh, Cool. It's it was very a tough nice. one. Yeah. So, um, did you grow up in an area where you saw this scenery very I frequently, or actually no? So I grew up in a very you know hilly, but not very mu yeah. many mountains, which I guess you know contributed to my love of mountains because <laughs> you know when I did go to see mountains, that was you know like the special occasion. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but there was a lot of water where I grew up, and um, I grew up by the river, and um, it. Um, I always liked watching, you know, the water flow and like the waves and how they um, reflect different aspects of the landscape. So yeah. Yeah, no, like the the reflections and like especially I think the nice part is the way the um, the sun's filtering down through the clouds. Right, it's, right. That must be yeah. well. I haven't done a lot of oil painting myself, but I think that's probably very challenging to get the effects. Yeah, well, like a lot of it is, you know, the rest of the painting as well, like helps bring out those uh, yeah. rays because the rest of it is, you know, kind of dark with some. Um, some parts of you know very much lit up um, and all of that works together you know much like you know systems and software um, many different components come together to help it get the work done and get the particular computation you're interested in done and cool. actually another interesting thing that um, I found when working with oil paints and um, doing paintings is that it helped me become better structured as an engineer in that so like with oil paints you have to plan in advance how you're going to work and there's um, different techniques you can achieve um, different um, effects you can achieve by doing uh, wet oil paints on top of wet oil paints versus wet oil paints after it dried out for a week yeah and like with software as well you know when you work as part of a large organization i work right now on distributed build systems you know and there's many different components it's a huge system and knowing how to structure your work so that you can keep making progress while um while other teams are able to pull the components that you need them to um has been very um helpful cool so would you would you recommend similar hobbies or interests as ways for people to expand and improve their their skills or, um, or well, ways of drawing inspiration maybe? Yes, definitely. Well, it's, it's a lot of fun and it's also, I feel like it teaches you a lot of different skills that you would be surprised how well it translates to other aspects of your life. Like music inspires some of the w my work in painting and it inspires a lot of my work in software engineering. So yes, I, um, I think it's a lot of fun and just continuing to learn I think is very important. Um, I try to acquire as many skills as I can and try to learn as many things as I can um, cool. and pick out things that I didn't know about. So two and a half years ago, I had no idea how to paint with oil paint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's really cool. You were able to pick up new skills and you're taking on new challenges with benchmarking and mm -hmm. speaking here at DevNexus. So that's, that's really awesome. So thanks very much for Thank the you. interview. Thanks. And I it's hope you enjoy pleasure. the rest of the conference. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Thanks. Mm -hmm.